Mercedes has developed considerably in the last 100 or so years, going from bare bone vehicles to now some of the most technically advanced in the entire world. Vans have always been their strong point, with many of the world's businesses relying on Mercedes products on a daily basis. From large trucks to compact vans, Mercedes have it nailed. In 2015, they launched a new Vito with a nice restyle, a range of eco-saving engines and a multitude of different trim levels. And it's also the most technically advanced model of Vito they've ever released. In this episode of Music Motors, I'll be looking at the Vito Sport 116 Crew Long Wheelbase. I put it through a lot of musical tasks, I drive countless miles, and I get to see just what this van is capable of. Sit back and enjoy. So the first thing I need to do with this van is load it up with equipment and see just how much it can fit. Can it take my stuff? Well, that goes without saying, but let's start off. It's about 8 a.m. and today is what I like to call a double whammy. I've got a session and a gig all in one day. Now, unfortunately, that means, yep, early start and late finish. So, as you can see behind me, I've got the van. And as I'm wearing, KX and KX. Let's see if I can get through this day. After a very quick unload, I've had to go and find parking around the corner because Abbey Road's having quite a lot of work done. No parking there. I've parked it around the corner, fit in a normal car bay. Can't ask for more, really. I mean, when I've been driving anything bigger like transit high tops. Fitting them in normal car spaces can be a pain, but this went straight in. In other news, I'm gonna need an energy drink because I'm about to collapse. So after a successful studio session, containing a lot of energy drink, I'm now on to going to the gig. What I normally do on the way to a gig is have a little bit of a break, a little bit of a rest, and this is truly a luxurious stop because I'm just sat in what is basically an armchair, relaxing, waiting to move on to the gig. Comfy. So I've made it to the gig and the van is literally just that luxury home from home where you just don't need to worry. If you wanna take a break, you can have a nap in the back. It's taken all my equipment today and as I'm gonna find out tomorrow, it's gonna to take not just me, but the best part of the van in the back on a ferry over the sea to another gig. So what better way to test the capability of this van than filling it with equipment Let's see how much we fit in. Easy. Everything fits in. Actually, we fit three cars worth of equipment in the back and had space for a lot more. We then fitted five people comfortably and we crossed the sea. Fun thing with this van is it looks really good. The client at the gig even commented on the van and how nice it was. In any line of work, having a nice vehicle can really aid the initial perception people have of you, and in this case it really impressed. So looks, carrying capability and comfort, an all rounder. The first thing that crossed my mind when I arranged getting this van delivered was, is this the kind of van, the kind of vehicle that could be used on a daily basis. Will it fit in a normal parking space? Behind me, you can kind of see that it is in a conventional parking bay. I'm in a normal car park parking bay. Next up was for me to consider, if I'm in a tight space, this is a big van. Is it gonna be able to get around and into some of the situations it's gonna get into? I've had previous experience with vans like Transits and Transporters in, the, in central London when it came to, say, a very tight turn into a width restriction. I had to, like, double take it. It wasn't easy to get through, but this van has a lot like I've never seen before. This is a lock that I would expect to see in a London bus, not on a conventional van. I really can't explain just how big this van is. 
inside. Because from the outside, most people just think it's a small van. That's the general perception of a Vito, but they are misleading. So to demonstrate that, please see the mini bedroom that I've set up in the back. Fuel economy was definitely on my mind when it came to considering things with this van. I mean, it is a long wheelbase, big-ish van. So maybe I was thinking 32, 33 miles per gallon? No. See, when I did a run up to London, I actually averaged 47 miles per gallon at 60 miles an hour. Now I wasn't hooning it, there wasn't loads of weight in the van, but it has that potential. Then taking it over to the Isle of Wight with lots of weight and lots of people, lots of start, stop and idling, I still got like a real time 32 miles per gallon. Now that's 32 with, I mean, I'm going flat out because obviously when you've got weight in the vehicle, you need to put your foot down quite a lot more. The engine was just consistently being pushed and a real 32, 33 miles per gallon is just an insane concept for such a big vehicle. So the sport part of this vehicle is also something to consider because it is quite sporty. It's not a slow van. First off in a summary, I need to say thank you to KX. They have given me the energy drinks to get me through this week onto the van. And this is a heck of a vehicle. I really am finding it very difficult to come up with anything that I would like any better. I'd like a bit more power, but there is a higher output engine version of this. I just have the 116. I found in my time with this van that I could treat it more like a car than any other van I've ever driven before. Because for instance, going over a toll bridge, I paid the car fee. When I went on the ferry, we paid a car fee because it was under a certain height and under a certain length. On the motorway, obviously you need to be a bit more careful. There are a couple of uh, gray areas in the law. So this is technically a panel van, but it's also a multi-purpose vehicle. So while you can do 70 in a multi-purpose vehicle, you can't do 70 in a panel van. So you kind of have to stick to 60 on dual carriageways. Uh, aside from that on motorways, you're absolutely fine. You can do the standard 70 miles an hour. What did I think of the Vito 116 Sport? Well, a lot. I'm extremely impressed by how capable this vehicle is, how it, it's a van, but you can drive it even if you've never driven a van before. You could drive this even as a learner driver. Unfortunately, I didn't get to put that to the test, but I'm 100% certain a learner driver would be able to get in this and drive it just like they would any of the vehicles they've been learning in. I felt safe and comfortable in all of my journeys and at no point did I think, oh, I can't wait to get out and have a break. I, it was an easy driving experience. It was a relaxing driving experience. And most of the time you jump out of the vehicle, grab a drink and then jump back in the vehicle because it was more comfortable than sitting anywhere else. Would I own one? Well, definitely. Seeing as prices start at 27,000 pounds the panel van it's in the realms of me saying hey if i'm getting a new car why not get one of these instead the fuel economy is not much worse than it would be the space inside is substantially bigger i mean there's so much space in the back as you saw previously in the video i took an pretty much an entire band to a gig and there was still space. If you're considering a new work vehicle or even a new personal vehicle, I think that you should definitely be considering the Mercedes Vito. Even if it's in its panel van, it doesn't specifically have to be in the crew form. It's such a phenomenal vehicle. It's the perfect crossover between luxury, practicality, and anyone can drive it. It's not difficult to drive.